Today's podcast is brought to you by one of the absolute best real estate agents in the Cleveland market, Tom Sugar with Howard Hanna Real Estate. Tom's here to help you understand the home buying and selling process. Um, he's here to ensure that you're also always going to get the best price, whether you're buying a home or whether you're selling a home, and his customer service skills are top notch. Give Tom a call at 216-406-2841. That's 216-406-2841. You can call or text him or visit his website. Shugsells.com, S H U G S E L L S dot com. Visit Tom Sugar, everybody. He is the best. But seriously, do you get nervous? I get excited. Do you? It's a difference, right? Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah, I fuck yeah. Like, oh, I think maybe once a year I'll go, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. Really? <laughs> I love the fact that people are all fired up at Bud Light. I'm like, oh, the outside of the can's what's going to offend you, not oh, the inside, right? Yeah, dude, like, t- talk on. to me. So, like, I'm. I'm one of those people. I don't care. Like, do you do what makes you happy? Yeah. Like that's like it's yeah. not my business. Don't hurt other people. And right. Yeah. And you had a joke actually um, about the, the bathrooms. Right. You know, and I love that joke. And I just kind of wanted to see where you stood. I'm on Bumble, right? And like these different dating apps. My wife doesn't let me. It's fairly reasonable. If you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to be a dick, Ian, but I kind of get it. She's tame this stuff. <laughs> I'm never gonna fucking live that down, dude. <laughs> but they have on the on the dating apps, dude, like guys that are women. Right. Do you think there should be an option to choose whether or not you want that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. So if you want, if you want that, that's so true. it's not an option. And that's why I ask you because I'll be scrolling, and although I just called the chick a stallion, believe it or not, I am not gay. So believe it. <laughs> We'll leave it up to the audience. Uh, I, I think if that's what you're looking for, you should be able to find it. But also, if that's not what you're looking for, you shouldn't have to find it. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, it, it, like for me, honestly, I don't really give a shit. Like it doesn't. It, right. does, it does not keep me up at night. I'm not like sitting here like, oh my god, what the fuck? It's not right. like that. It's more of just like I'm kind of curious where other people stand on it. Because like, listen, man, however you feel, rock on. There you used know? to be jokes when I first started out about. It'd be so much easier to be gay because then you, you could find more common interests. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and I'm, 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 I'm not you hear about about the transgenders. You're like, well, maybe it is easier, <laughs> dude. <laughs> maybe you can maybe you can watch the hockey game while you do things. That would be really cool. I mean, and even for women too, because we were at a venue earlier today at a hotel, and there was somebody. Um, watching uh they were doing straw or flower field like a tour of a flower field uh-huh and like that's just some shit i would never want to do right right you know what i mean i'm just not a flower field kind of guy yeah yeah you know i understand i i, I whatever makes you happy mm-hmm. like, i don't whatever you want to do do but like there's been there's been unisex bathrooms for years but people are all fired up about it i'm like they're called family bathrooms all the time target so yeah why why are you upset where people gotta poop man Someone's got to do not it. It's always about motivation. <laughs> Sometimes people got to poop. Yeah, dude, shout out poopies on the shirt too. You know they, they, they like to, uh, they like to, uh, they like to make it seem like there's just a certain group of people that does the the bad stuff, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Every group of people has the douchebags. That's the way you got to look at it. Yeah. There, there's, it would be so much easier if a guy with a lazy eye and a, a, a cleft palate. That meant you were a molester. Right, right. yeah. No, yeah. It's like we all know now, dude. Everybody comes in every different form, so you got to figure it out. There's there's, there's predators in no matter what you do, so or who you are. When you're on stage, is it something where – are you still nervous to get on stage? I mean, you've done it so many times. You have a long career. Yeah, like are you are you actually – but seriously, do you get nervous? I get excited. Is do that, you? That, it's a difference, right? Yeah, yeah for like, sure. <laughs> can't wait. Yeah, I fuck yeah. Like, oh, I think maybe once a year I'll go, oh, I shouldn't be doing this really i love it though because you banter the fuck out of the crowd you always involve the crowd yeah they're, they're i know i break the the wall you know like I, they're part of my they're part of it it's I, I i did a podcast this morning and i talked about the best time you've ever had with your friends is when you're all sitting around 
and somebody starts with a subject and then you put in your two bits and then I put in my two bits and then it goes back to you and it just builds. Right? Yeah. And then by the end of it, you're just lying on the floor. Everybody's crying. So it's that I, I yeah, I, I don't feel comedy is a speech. Like I, I love monologists, mm -hmm. but I love to watch comedy where I can't like you can watch some comedians and you can see how they sat at a table and wrote things out. Yeah. Like, I love it when I can't tell if somebody lived what's going on. Oh, no. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Like, Burt Kreischer. I, I, like, we're. One of my favorite comedians ever, by the way, Burt. Well, I love watching him because I'm just like, you can see him doing what he's talking about. Did you see his first right? pitch at the Indians game the other day? There's nothing more Burt than this. Listen, so Burt, I, I, was, I was here in L.A., otherwise I would have fucking been at that show um, because I had the pleasure of walking into Monster Jam with my son a couple weeks ago, and Burt Kreischer's shirt is off on the like a fucking huge billboard inside, right? I go on Instagram the other day. He throws out the first pitch at the, at the home opener, uh -huh. rips his shirt off, dude. He's just so himself, you know? Yeah, I am so. Oh. <laughs> but it's... That's the kind of humor I like. I like yeah. that. And my style is, I actually goes back to when I was in grade 10, 10th grade in America, grade 10 in Canada, English, we had to do a speech, you know, like yeah. an oral presentation. And I think you had to kill two or three minutes. What I did was I just, I asked a question and then they all fought about it. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so Let's I, go. I That's awesome. I basically stepped out of my out of the spotlight immediately. So, but that's great. I mean, did you? Were you good in school? No, I was. I I. I bet you my GPA was worse than yours. What was yours? Uh, we didn't have GPAs in Canada, so. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. So, it was just it was just I don't know what it was, but anyways, I was, I was not like I would slough off until. I just needed to pass and then I could pass it. Yeah. I, think I was that student. Yeah. But there was nothing I think I think things have changed. I think uh teachers have changed it so even the most boring thing, they try to make it sexy. Yeah, absolutely. Like, when I was a kid, if you're gonna be a mechanic, you were just gonna you're gonna go to work every day. Now with with uh discovery and stuff like that, you're like, Oh, I can build these fancy cars, I can absolutely. Build this, I can build that or or the same with almost every thing that's out there so math there's all that kind of stuff you know but i just didn't find anything sexy when i was a kid i was wonder i weirdly enough i i kind of wanted to be a comedian all the time so, really yeah what age did you do your first show 21 22 how well did you do on the first on the first one i survived i have written all my jokes on my hand and i'd sweat them off <laughs> oh no shit yeah, dude so, oh. Down and oh. so i started doing impressions of fish with my hands <laughs> I love your comedy. It's I'm not and I'm not just saying that. Like I fantastic. truly enjoy. It. You're fucking fantastic. You're great. Who is your favorite comedian beside yourself right now? Oh, okay. not even close. Huh? David Tell is the funniest man on the planet right now, and nobody can touch him. I love that you know that. And I guarantee you, every comic, um, I would say ninety percent of comics will agree with me. Really? Yeah. What is it about him that like he just crushes it? Effortless and just, just like his mind is moving. There's nothing that's going to get past him. He's ready for everything. No, and he's, he's really good at trimming the fat that he's a professional butcher. Like when he when he puts the steak on the table, there's just enough, just enough perfectly every time. And that's, I think, so big because, you know, you do. You And I'm one of those people that, like, I have a million filler words in every single fucking sentence that I have, right? And so doing that, even on podcasts, is is difficult. It's something you got to work on. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely, it's amazing. It's an amazing gift and and there's not another comedian out there that is able to slice and dice a joke as quickly as he can. It takes us all a couple, couple, at least a couple shows to figure out what needs to be gone, you know? What do you do um, in situations like what's the... Like, Murder. So you just kill your fans after they, sure. after they, yeah, that's reasonable. Um, do you, but do you get heckled a lot because you engage with the crowd? So they feel like more, or do they feel more apt to maybe kind of fuck with you a bit? No, 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 they, because they get to play, right? Right. I think sometimes heckling comes from, and nothing against other comics, but maybe the crowd being bored. Absolutely. Right. So, and sometimes when I do, when I do deal with some stuff, it's people that aren't, they aren't smart enough to keep up with the show. So they get lost and it's fear based, which is really fun. Yeah. Like the guys that I've been, the people that have like snapped during my shows are just complete waste. Just mad skins, jobs. Just like, just, just, and why, why are you even at a comedy show? Right. 
So, you know, well, that's what blows me away. Pay attention to comedy. You got to be smart. And people that usually heckle and get lost or get mad at comedy aren't smart enough to tell where the joke is and the joke isn't. Okay. So they're offended by everything, right? Because they're not smart people. Like, I really truly believe people that complain a lot are, are not smart people that complain. They're dumb people that are lost in a situation. And, and I get I get being lost. Like, the world's a tough thing. We're just stuck on this rock floating. Right. Just trying to have a little bit of a good time over oh, here. Oh, just a little bit. Scared. And these, they're, they're scared. They're, 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 they're frightened people. I think it's... it's fuck it, those people. I mean, really, fuck those people, though, because, what, like, if you're going to go to a comedy show, that's what you expect. Yesterday, we went to the improv, mm -hmm. and we had the opportunity to sit in the front row. I oh, took it immediately. You both here? Yeah, we went. We went yeah, I, I took the week. Well. Originally, originally, I live in Dallas now. Unfortunately, I kind of like Dallas. To be honest. Yeah. yeah, it's got some. It's because it's kind of got that in and out. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Like, you know, you'll find some really, really hip places, and then you'll find some very conservative places. So. As long as they have air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally all that fucking matters. The reverse of Cleveland, where as long as they have heating. <laughs> oh yeah, how was how was hilarities? I meant to ask you that. So awesome. What did you think of that? You been there before or no? I love it. Yeah, I love hilarities. I love I love Nick. I love the fanciness. I love the fanciness of the upstairs. Yeah. I love the uh, the, the schlock of the downstairs. Uh, the murder mystery going on. I oh, dude, I love it, dude. <laughs> yeah, I think it's so funny. And the and. <laughs> Was Brian Kenny there when you were there? Uh, Brian's where he like I don't he usually he he'll host sometimes. No, it wasn't, no, it wasn't him. It wasn't him. I can't, I'm, I'm blanking on the two guys that were with me, but both were were hysterical and fun guys to be around. But it's funny with sketch people, right? So sketch people, they're either on Saturday Night Live making money, mm -hmm. or they are waitering. Like there is no in between, right? It's fucking hilarious you say that. I'm not kidding you when I tell you this. Marcelo from Saturday Night Live right. performed with my dad at a shithole bar like two years ago, dude. Right. And I saw him there. I think 90% of the bar was talking during everybody's set. Like, right? And then one day I look on, I get a thing online and there's two people from fucking Cleveland or whatever. Two, they're adding two people to Saturday Night Live and it's fucking Marcelo. So shout out Marcelo because good job, dude. Yeah, but there's no, there's no money. There's no money in it. Like, it's crazy. Like, they're working jobs. It's great. Good for them. They're usually the most amazing writers, but it's just... It's a weird, like at least with stand up, you you don't have to be at the top. Of, you, you can still make money, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Have you met any comedians? Do you do you like do you take tidbits kind of from every person? Not necessarily, obviously, jokes, but I'm saying like I steal everything. Yeah. yeah. All right, Carlos Mencia times two, right? I get I get uh, I get on uh, my, my uh, clips online. Yeah. It, he stole this from Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> he sounds like Dan Aykroyd. I, I mean, sometimes I'll just, yes, he was a brilliant stand-up, that Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd, I totally <laughs> forgot about him, dude. <laughs> stand-up and another thing, like, he's like Robin Williams. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm actually more like uh, Jonathan Winters, which we both really, really like. But it shows how much you don't know about stand-up that you think of uh, Robin Williams. Anyways. Robin Williams, yeah. I'm glad you're not like Robin Williams, you know? No, I, I think... I think I'm a little, I'm way more mellow for it. I'm not manic. I don't think my brain's manic. Right. I think it goes, but it's not manic. Do you constantly, because you are so good at rebuttaling, I think personally, as far as rebuttaling goes, you're like, you're you're right up there in like the top five. Because you are, you, you hold, you know, you're right away. Do you think, um, do you think that skill came naturally? Is that something you had to like really like work on? It's a little bit naturally. I think it's a little bit, uh, from chirping playing minor, minor minor hockey when I was a kid. Oh yeah, well that's so, gonna do it. Yeah, so, yeah. So sitting on the bus and, and uh, you know just that's just just my style. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I, I just I think I have fun with it. I think it's I think it's my personality. I like to say that off stage, so on stage I'm t tang and concentrate like the crystal form. Yeah, yeah. And then off stage I'm watered down. Like I'm still that person, but I'm way more watered. You're 100 percent the same person. Yes. I mean, I, but that's what's really cool. I think that's what makes a great comic, though, right? Like, you don't really, like, yeah, you have, yeah, you know, yeah. you go make a hard on stage, be, but. You're supposed to be naked. You're supposed to be naked on stage, right? So, yeah, like, I, I always compare, I think, naked on stage, like, um, I've never met him in person, Theo Vaughn. Yes. 
But I've, everything I've heard is Theo's Theo is Theo. Theo is Theo is Theo. Yeah, and, I, and that's it. And he's an interesting character, um, but I really like listening to his comedy as well, which is always fun. Do you have a favorite joke? Of somebody else's? or? Um, yeah. Well, yeah, I have my favorite joke. <laughs> I know, no, no, that was really general. I don't find any of mine. No, no, yeah, if somebody else is like my favorite joke, for instance, of all time, because you asked, was uh, like Sam Kinison, right? I love it when he's talking about world hunger. That's one of my favorite jokes fucking ever. Today's podcast is brought to you by one of the absolute best real estate agents in the Cleveland market, Tom Sugar with Howard Hanna Real Estate. Tom's here to help you understand the home buying and selling process. Um, he's here to ensure that you're also always gonna get the best price, whether you're buying a home or whether you're selling a home, and his customer service skills are top notch. Give Tom a call at 216-406-2841. That's 216-406-2841. You can call or text him or visit his website, shugsells.com, S-H-U-G-S-E-L-L-S.com. Visit Tom Sugar, everybody. He is the best. I honestly, I, I, I still think of Bill Cosby talking about uh, him and his friends racing their go karts down the hill. Really? Yeah. That one? The exclusive noises he made and stuff like that. I don't even think I've ever heard that joke. And the rape stuff. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and the fucking rapes. <laughs> the rape rape. That actually went over really well for him down the road too. Oh, it's it, it really aged well. Oh. Uh, it was a, uh, but when I was a kid, I remember uh, the thing uh, that Cosby did, and you can hate him, but I didn't know he was a rapist when I was a kid. I didn't know, like, right. I wouldn't have listened to him that I know, but he could paint a picture, like I could listen to him and I could see everything that he was talking about. Okay. I could really, it was a cartoon in my head, which for the longest time I didn't want to do video, a uh, video, like I did two CDs, three okay. CDs, and before I did a video thing because I wanted people to be able to see it without seeing it. Wow. So, yeah. I don't know. The question was, what's your favorite joke? And I'm just like... No! <laughs> I love that. Be- no, no, no. You, you answer the question. You answer the question. I think it's I think it's great that, like, that you say that stuff, right? Because, you know, I'm a big R. Kelly fan. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's... <laughs> Anybody with a good prostate is. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm serious, man. Like it's that's that's a that's a very interesting thing to say because normally when I'm watching comedy, even now, I'm watching or what well, yeah, obviously I'm watching comedy. I'm not listening to it. Yeah, no. You know, and I think the facial expressions your your ability to be serious on stage is great, but I think also something that always makes me laugh, this is gonna be the maybe the gayest thing I've ever said, is when you start smiling. Right. You know what I mean? Because you are whether you're smiling with the crowd or engaging in your own joke, and I think that brings even more laughter to people because you think it's funny. Which is funny because now with the words, like they put the, the uh, subtitle it. Okay, yeah. Right? So now you're seeing the words and you're looking at the face, but you're not hearing the inflection. Oh, okay. That's a really interesting. So, wow. Because there's so many people that watch it at work, so they can't have any sound up. Right. So. How interesting. I never even fucking thought of that. Yeah. I never even thought it's of crazy. that. Is that, um, do you have somebody that does all like your editing and all that yes, shit? I have a, a guy I work with, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, the social media has been actually insane. I fired everybody that worked for me last year. Good for you. Like in October. And then I met this uh, young kid who's a kind of a social media savant and he's been helping me. And I've gone, I don't know, at least, at least, so they, I, the, the thing that I'll just use Instagram. I went from 26,000 followers on Instagram January 1st to 143,000 followers. Yeah, you, I, I have religiously watched comedy for the last three years on YouTube uh-huh. and you are my feed. I'm not kidding you. Like really? you, you do a, I mean, whoever's doing that's why I ask because whoever's doing that yeah. shit for you is fucking killing it. Yeah, it's, I've gone from, on YouTube, it's gone from 5,000 to 75,000. It's kind of great. It's like, I'm, and I'll just keep building it and see where it goes. And uh, you know, I, everybody that watches is, is <laughs> I thank you. And when, you, and when you say nice things, and even when you say bad, the people that say bad things, I'm like, build that algorithm, motherfucker. Yeah, I keep going, dude. <laughs> and people are like, you don't respond. Are you, are you stupid that you respond to them? I'm just like, well, just keep them going or just makes the algorithm go. But I think the other side of it, too, yeah, you have to have engagement with your fans. You do. And, and I never, I, this, is, this is something you probably had to deal with is learning how to deal with people without taking it personally. Oh, yeah. Like when I used to, I remember 
when I used to get things, I just like I just get this overwhelming just like this feel of like oh like I can't I don't know what to do with myself. I'm, I'm angry. I'm, I'm, now I'm just like I like to say stupid things. I usually say no refunds or when they say something bad, <laughs> no refunds or or uh, 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 customer service is closed. <laughs> yeah. you know, like because, <laughs> customer because, service is closed. <laughs> but I, I, I say you're triggered. I'm like, nah, man. Just respond, and that's all I'm doing. You you, you wanted me to respond. And then it's funny too because you know none of them motherfuckers would ever come up to you in person and be like, you know, say the shit that they say online. I say I, so. The, here's my favorite one. So I do a joke about on 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 YouTube and on my social media about. Uh, there's, a, there's a 14 year old boy in the audience and I say are you a virgin okay and he says yes and I say good stay a, lot, a virgin oh I've seen this I just keep going and I, I go but just a warning the first time you go down on the girl it's got a little bit of a kick <laughs> right and there's it's funny but there's like if he's a virgin he doesn't get it yeah and it's a warning right well if people call me pedo like they're, you're a pedo you're a pedophile I'm like yeah, I, that is not how you try to fuck somebody. By warning them. No, oh, that's not. And and when you're 14, think about what you've seen. Like if if you said I was like he's 11, I, I'm a mess. Dude, that's I true. mean, all I was thinking about a 14 was fucking, dude. You're just they're just being stupid. Like all the joy. I just like people are just lost. Like oh, you know, I'm like I'm warning the kid. I'm trying to keep him over. And I think too because. Pussy will scare the shit out of you the first time. Amen, dude. Yeah, well, dude. Best thirty seconds of her life, man. I, I and like I think the other, I think the other side of that too is like, it's a joke. You're at a comedy show. Oh, you know what? That's a really good question. You ever seen like a baby in the crowd at a yes, show? Not too long ago. I, no. When I was in Minnesota. And like, uh, what the fuck? Minnesota in January, there was a baby in the crowd on the late show Saturday night breastfeeding. Dang, she was. She had the titty out, just getting after it right oh, at the I show. It. It was at the back room, like, oh. <laughs> Turn the lights on. <laughs> I, I said, hey, baby, baby. Somebody said yes. Uh, someone said yes. I, I said I said no. Somebody brought a baby. Couldn't afford a baby. Soon as they brought their baby, someone said they're breastfeeding. <laughs> oh my god! I'm like now it's a strip club. That's literally yeah. That's really weird. What time was the show at? Like ten? Yeah, show. yeah it's like ten o'clock. No fucking way, yeah. dude. Just bringing the I'm baby the out. Quiet, but I'm curious. I'm curious if that baby will have a sense of humor. Definitely. It's kind of have rubbed off. I mean, think about it. She was, that baby was sucking tit while at your show. Sucking They'll never forget that, you know? <laughs> That's one of my other favorite jokes that you have, too. You have the teacher boobs joke, dude. Oh, yeah. With the teacher with those fake cans, dude. That shit was hilarious. Do you, is that hard, though? Like, is that, that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. Yeah, me too. I've got. I'm about halfway there. D- did you like? But seriously, when you're when you're talking to these people, Ian, and like, that's off the cuff. None of that's scripted. Is that something? Where, are you ever worried about offending somebody in the crowd like that? No. When you're when you're in the moment, like I like to think. Not that she was offended. Obviously, she wasn't. Well, here's the thing. I like to think that I'm pretty good at judging people whether they want to talk to me or not. Well, I don't. I don't. Go, talking to people in the crowd is not me trying to make somebody feel bad about themselves. Right. It's not trying to make me feel somebody feel uncomfortable about themselves. It's about bringing them in and letting them just be part a character in my show. Yeah. So that's awesome. If if, you, if, if I won't have them if they're if they're not having fun, you know, you let them out. I, I find I find outs for them because I don't I don't I I, I, I want to be an escape for people. I don't want to I don't want I want people to come to the show and jump out of their skin and just relax for an hour and if they can have fun talking to me that'll help them escape and if they're not having fun i'm putting them back into where they were before they came there so i don't want them there i want them to have fun i want them to escape well i, I think like, that's why i wanted you on the podcast I'm so i'm i'm so lucky that i i'm able to be people's escape but at the same time they're my escape because i've lost myself for an hour as well right, right. so yeah i just so i i try it the big thing is I want people to have fun at the show. So I'm not going to put somebody on the spot that is, has a fear of talking in front of an audience. It's embarrassed. You know, I, I can tell, like I can feel people's somehow. I can feel it once in a while. I'll fuck it up. And you'll see somebody start crying and run out of the room. No, I haven't. <laughs> I mean, with the amount of shows you do and stuff, that's bound to happen. But I, I, that point is amazing, dude. And it's amazing because for me, you know, when I went through like a real hard time last year, I just was a miserable motherfucker. And, that is the escape 
you know, to sit to like to be able to throw on one of your shows and like what even if it's a five minute clip, man, for that five minutes, you don't think about anything else going on in your life. Yep. You know what I mean? And you're, and you're able to laugh and your smile. And that makes a difference for me all the time, which is kind of why this podcast started, because you guys are the escape. I mean, seriously. And it means a lot, I think, to a lot of people. I also love cocaine. I just don't do it anymore yeah. because it doesn't let me back. It's funny. Yeah, it's funny. I was doing uh, a podcast this morning about, with a guy from Detroit because I'm going to Detroit this weekend. And he said when he was a kid, his dad used to take him to sporting events. And he was four or five years old. And he said he, they got a beer spilt on him from the upper deck yeah. at, at the old Olympic Stadium. And he asked his dad, are we going to do anything about that? And his dad said, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're no, not. we're not going to do anything. We're just going to pretend that it didn't happen. But they would go to baseball games. And he's seen when he was a kid people doing lines of cocaine at a baseball game at the, at the, at the uh, Tigers game. And I was like, is there a more ridiculous sport to do cocaine? Like, it's the most boring sport. <laughs> yeah, ever. like if you're going to do cocaine all amped up and then having to sit there. I think legitimately the only sport that I would ever want to uh, do cocaine at is hockey. I mean, because it's so intense, dude. It also doesn't work for comedy when people like that. Oh yeah, you're not listening. You're you're you just go 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 go. Tell when people are all blown out at the the timings way off. Yeah, you're just like, give me a break. You ever gone to a concert? You weirdo. (laughs) Have you ever gone to a show though and like met somebody like it's a new comic or whatever? Not even a new comic, a comic that maybe you thought was amazing and then they were super underwhelming and then you saw them again. It wasn't just one set. They just actually suck, in your opinion. Um, not to name anybody, but just no, in like, general. Like the guys that, that are big, you mean? Like, yeah. No, we already know. Like, for the most part, we know. And you can tell You can tell whether a guy's having an off night or just not clicking. And and that's that's the thing about when comics have been doing comedy for a while, you you, you learn how you're... you're um, I'm blanking on the word because I've been doing comedy for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but you're you're uh you're not that old you're you know the the amount of shows that you have are off just reduce like you you're you're able to click back in no problem your, your right. consistency stays at a, a high rate and every so often you're going to shank one in the woods tiger woods does oh yeah everybody does just everybody shanks one in the woods every so often but your consistency from doing it and knowing how to get your brain into a place you need to be is there is that a big thing is like finding out where your crowd's at and do you adjust your set based on that or do you predetermine your set and this is my set this is what i'm gonna do no i i when i get on stage i figure the crowd out like we're just kind of figuring i try to i try to take them take them on a trip you know yeah absolutely it doesn't have to be I, i don't my show doesn't have to be the same level every time it can and it twists and turns and yeah there's, there's weird things happen in my show, so yeah. That is hilarious. Do you have kids? No. You can't breed this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. You're a, line. Yeah, you're actually at the top of the list of the sperm bank of yeah. wanted come right yeah. there. They want you, dude. They want that. <laughs> Are you you're married though, you said. I am married. She won't let you on Bumble though. She won't let me on Bumble. That's kinda of bullshit. I mean I understand, but maybe she should let you live a little. Imagine, I'm sure I'm sure if my my wife left me on Bumble, that means she'd be on Bumble too. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, where, that's where you spend out of control. Yeah, that is a uh, not I a thought this was just about me. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's not just about you. Oh, Anybody that's ever had a wife or a girlfriend fucking knows that. Mm. Um, what's your plans for um, the next like year or so? Like, what are, what are you doing? What are you planning to do? Um, what can you kind of let us in on as far as where's Ian headed? Okay, so a lot of guys are aiming for specials, uh, and I, I think they're they're funny that they call them specials because there's so many of them. There's nothing special. So about. many, dude. So it should be just called hours, right? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Hour of, an hour of comedy. Yeah, sure. Um, I agree. Special, just an hour of comedy, right? But I don't want to. I at this moment, three months after starting working with this kid. I don't want that. I would like to, I'm, I'm taking some money and two or three times this year, I'm going to record shows with a, a camera crew and lighting crew and, and, and sound crew and be able to cut them up as well as recording through the club stuff through, you know, through yeah, of weeks. course, because I found from this last three months, the small, the small advertisements have helped me out more than anything I've done ever in my career. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Just the, the, uh, the, I have no, I, I, I think because everybody's on the internet. 
Yeah, I mean, not all. everybody was on on HBO. Not everybody was on Showtime. Not everybody was watching Comedy Central. But everybody and you can say to somebody, "I was watching Comedy Central, and you should see this." But do they do they ever see it? Whereas now, when I say to you, "You should see this," I'm sending it to you so you can actually just push play. Which is awesome. Yeah, the first time I actually recognize you, and I know this is like eight years ago or whatever, kind of already well into your career, but on um, the last comic standing, I think it was. Yeah. Yep. Um, that was the first time I ever heard your name. And then, like I said, a couple of years ago, man, I've, I've been like hitting it up. Oh my God. That's hilarious. But yeah, like when I saw your stuff, man, originally I was like super pumped. I couldn't, I couldn't believe, um, your style and you're no, you're not like anybody else. You're not. Your my, my sister would say I'm just like her. And I would say Jocelyn, no, <laughs> no, I'm like my fucking. This is actually really funny, and my wife is really funny. Like, and my mom was always it's really funny. I I need to be around funny people to be able to be funny. Like, I understand, but I I do I I I'm like so happy you say I'm not like anybody else because I think that's what we all strive for at the end of the day. Yeah, be our own thing. I, I like when people say you're just a rip off of them. And I'm like, wow, interesting. They started in comedy after me. <laughs> well, it's like I, I think it was I ripped off somebody three years before. <laughs> I mean, you, but you aren't you aren't like anybody else. Like, and I like how my, one of my favorite parts, one of the things that always makes me laugh, is when you talk fast and you stop hard. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, and like I always think that shit is so funny because you're so direct, but you pick back up and you're going a million miles an hour again. Was that? That's got to be something you fucking learn, dude. Because that's I, unbelievable. I have no idea how it works, but I was watching a clip of me the other day. I thought it was hysterical. <laughs> I made myself laugh, so I asked. I don't know how it started, but I was in Minnesota and I asked the crowd what their favorite uh, cough candy was, and and somebody said balls. We're talking, and then some lady yelled out, "Recall it back!" <laughs> I said, "Recall it, you fucking immigrant!" <laughs> I was really quick and really short like that, but it just made me laugh so hard. Oh, God, I'm hilarious. I, so that, he's yelling at you over there. You good? Okay, we're about to wrap up anyways. Oh, that's fine. We're about to, we're up at, we're at 31 minutes, so we're going to let him go because he's got a hockey game to get to. But I want two more, two more things. Um, just to say, um, actually, I'd say, I would say actually my favorite joke of yours, and it's an audience one, is when you're in the audience, or when somebody in the audience yelled out, fuck dude i can't remember exactly what they yelled out but they yelled out something that was like had nothing to do with what you were talking about and then later in your set it happened again do you know what I'm, which one i'm talking about i'll send it to you later sounds, sounds pretty for, sounds pretty much my show something, dude something nonsensical is said and then we ran yeah, yeah. Later. there's a clip of it later because you're like yeah he's like you're like are we in some sort of fucking like whatever like crazy universe i, I think i know what you're talking about when the guy told me to put on a to put on a dress. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, dude. That's the one. That is fucking my my favorite for sure. That's of you just rebuttaling. That's fucking funny. <laughs> and then the lady said something. Yeah. <laughs> and San Bernardino, there are tough people in there. <laughs> they will dress you up before they fuck you. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, they well, he, he wanted to dress you up. Um, on a scale of one to ten, I always finish with this. Um, on a scale of one to ten, how happy are you right now? Ten being the best, and um, if you're not at a ten, what do you think would get you there? Um, I, I would say I'm probably at a seven or eight. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't know. Can you get to ten? Like, I really don't know if it's possible to get to ten, but I'm not, not at a one. So I'm pretty happy. Like, I've, I've, I've been, you know, I, I get, I dealt with a little bit of depression and stuff and I'm, I, I'm not so I'm pretty happy with it so yeah good for you man yeah, yeah things are good and, uh, people in my life are good and yeah I'll just keep going you know dude I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time oh, I, really can. I know you're I busy to, as fuck I went to the wrong I went to the wrong Hyatt people because I'm a fucking idiot <laughs> I lived down the street and I went to the wrong Hyatt my so, god that's okay it was only a five minute walk yeah. I looked I was like, holy fuck, hopefully he's not like eight years away, dude. Oh, as soon as I said it, I was just like, are you, because I'm standing on them. You're like, just walk in the back and it's bound by the, I'm like, there's nobody here at this pool. I went over there and the guy was like, hey dude, where's the pool? He goes, eighth floor. I'm like, what? That's not, <laughs> like, eighth floor. I'm like, pool. I missed you. Why in the elevator? Why not in the elevator? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a douche.
You're not, for not a douche. Black Panther Party show. Hey, yeah, no, no doubt about it. You're going to be welcome back for sure. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Today's podcast is brought to you by one of the absolute best real estate agents in the Cleveland market, Tom Sugar with Howard Hanna Real Estate. Tom's here to help you understand the home buying and selling process. Um, he's here to ensure that you're also always going to get the best price, whether you're buying a home or whether you're selling a home, and his customer service skills are top notch. Give Tom a call at 216-406-2841. That's 216-406-2841. You can call or text him or visit his website, shugsells.com, S-H-U-G-S-E-L-L-S.com. Visit Tom Sugar, everybody. He is the best.